Labour set for nationwide protest over closure of universities while the federal government declares solidarity protest illegal. And we take a closer look at the 2023 governorship election as political parties prepare to battle for the soul of Lagos State. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. Barring any last-minute change of mind, Nigeria Labour Congress will this week embark on a nationwide protest in solidarity with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, which has been on strike for more than six months, forcing students to stay at home endlessly. Meanwhile, some sister workers' union have declared their solidarity with the striking Texture Education Union, saying that they will fully participate in the protest and may even join the strike to show their disappointment and displeasure against the federal government for allowing the country's public textual education to be closed down for this long. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dr. Austin Sado. He is a former ASU chairman, University of Port Haka branch, and also joining us is Onyeka Chris. He's the Assistant General Secretary, NLC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Sado, because, you know, this is the, you are the primary guys who have been on strike, uh, and this is because you're still trying to get government to the negotiation table. Now, uh, within the past few days, we've seen the president go from um, saying, well, we need this to be handed over to the Minister of Education, as opposed to uh, the Minister for Labor, Chris Ngigi, um, interfacing with Labor. Uh, but then, since that um, message from Mr. President was put out, uh, what changes has there been? Has there been any moves that one way or the other looks like things might change for the better? Because I also hear that there are some universities who are withdrawing from the strike and saying that they're going back to classrooms. Well, thank you very much. Um, as, as far as I know, nothing has changed. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the, the directive by the president. Um, so, uh, well, that, that was the news that broke on that um, Tuesday last week. Uh, the president had given directive. But the, the spokesperson to the president came out two days or so later on to say there was no such directive that um, the Minister of Education, Melanda um, Mwadam, asked for two or three weeks to resolve this impasse. And then um, I, I, I should imagine that um, whatever the case is, um, the next thing will be to have engagement with the union mm -hmm. um, towards the, the resolution of this impasse. As far as I know, um, there is no meeting that has held uh, between um, ASU team and government since that Tuesday. Um, maybe there are, there are things in the works that uh, it is, I mean, you still have a uh, you still have um, a whole seven days. And uh, from, from the way I perceive and understand the situation, um, clearly, um, I, I just believe that if, if um, government wants to resolve this conflict, that one day or two days will be enough. So I think we are still within time, and I hope that we will have um, that uh, opportunity to have this resolve and put it behind us. Uh, but with regards to the point you raised about uh, some and universities um, pulling out. I am not aware of anyone. I, I remember that the Minister um, of Labor, Dr. Chris Mbige, had alleged that um, that um, a university, university of Sokoto, precisely, that the medical school of University of Sokoto had written to say they were not part of the strike and that uh, they would be they working and they are graduated students. But for those who understand the working of the university system, you will understand the fact that until the Senate of the university approves the result, a degree result or whatever result, it is not a result. So when the Minister of Labor claimed that um, a university medical school had graduated students, only that minister be able to tell Nigerians what that meant and how that was achieved. But to the best of my knowledge, there's no university that has opted out of its um, strike 
And as you can see from the current of um, support across the nation, almost every person that is on the side of the, of the ordinary people, the poor people in this country, amongst them, um, no matter what you think about it, across any other, any any demarcation, imaginary things created by governments, there is, a, I mean, support for is that once and for all, let us deal with these issues. And for that reason, I do not imagine that any university lecturer who thoroughly understands the reason we have been on this strike will have opted out. I'm going to come back to you because there are certain things I need you to break down for me as, as per ASU. But let me go to Mr. Nika, uh, Chris. Uh, Mr. Chris, you are of the, of Labour and, and many would say that this does not concern Labour. But then it's argued, it could be argued that it affects all of us. Uh, and and um, at some point, the, the minister had said that Labour getting involved in this is political. Um, he said that over and over again. And I'm wondering... Uh, why did Labour take so long to take interest? I mean, it's been six weeks, uh, six months, I beg your pardon. Why didn't this impress upon Labour when it was three, three months or, or two months? Why now? Um, okay, I, I think that the Minister of Labour, the Minister of Labour was doing too much of portraying that uh, Nigerian Labour Congress does not have any business getting involved uh, in in the um, the definition of the house mm -hmm. one they are ASU as a union is an affiliate of the Nigerian Labour Congress and so whatsoever affects ASU and their membership affects the Nigerian Labour Congress and I'm sure that the Minister of Labour, who in his registry is domiciled the affiliates of the nation, understands that very much and understands our responsibility to Russia. That is one. Two, whatsoever affects any section of the Nigerian society also has the capacity affect Nigerian workers and affect all Nigerians wherever they may be. It is also our responsibility to ensure good governance or what we are called effective governance to impact the lives of Nigerians wherever they may be. And so the prolonged state of our children at home is not just an issue that the Nigerian Congress will be interested in, but also every Nigerian, every reasonable Nigerian must be interested in it. It is disheartening for, for the federal government to say things like this. It shows that they want, they do not want the Nigerian people to engage the to engage in the activity and ask them questions pertaining to where they have misgoverned this nation. And now you ask the question, why is it that it has taken us so long? Uh, that is further from the truth. We have started engaging the federal government from the world go. We have held meetings on this issue. We have held meetings with us on this issue. They have briefed us Nigerian Labour Congress has written letters to the federal government on this issue. We have excised all four persons in this past six months trying to make the federal government to see reason to, call, to ensure that they implement agreements that they have reached with us. We do not understand why the federal government we renege on agreements that they were not forced to reach. And we believe it is a high of responsibility on the part of a party to reach agreement with another and decide not to implement it. And so the Nigerian Labour Congress, after so much pain, 
I wonder if where the strength has felt that it is now time for us to take action that will be more visible. And that is why the NEC and the national leadership of the Congress have decided that enough is enough and that we are going to embark. Remember, not a strike, but a protest rally mm. to express our discontent about other what is going on, other what is going on in Nigeria. I'm curious. I'm, I'm, curious to, I'm curious to. I, I mean, no, I'm, not, I'm not in any way saying that you know embarking on a protest is a bad thing, but I'm wondering. Asu has been on strike for six months, a very long time. That's almost yeah. a whole school year. Now you're embarking yeah, on a protest that Asu is okay. What do you think that this will do if Asu has been on strike for six months and now you're going on a protest? What exactly do you think that, what effect will it, you know, make on the government? I, I, don't, I don't know that you are listening to me. What I said is this, very clear, that we have been engaging government and the ASU, my brother, the former ASU chairman, will tell you that we are doing a government on this matter. We have been intervening from the point that ASU declared strike. Not even this strike, the former strike. So we have been engaging. But because we want to excite the change in our actions, that is why it has taken this one. You have less than one minute. Okay, let me, let me go back to Mr. Sado. Mr. Sado, I'm going to ask the same question I asked. Yes, ASU has given a nod to the uh, United Labour to be part of this protest, meaning that ASU will be also on the road tomorrow protesting. But I ask again, I mean, I'm sure that you're trying to get something from the federal government, but if they have not reacted in six months, what will a protest of two days do to them? Well, thank you very much. Um, I mean, it's only reasonable to say that um, if you have been patient for five months um, that this strike has been gone and um, have used other means, which, as you alluded, have not made government to do what is expected of it, um, taking the tempo a little bit higher will definitely have some, um, some results. Mm. Um, you can imagine... Um, if Nigeria, the Nigerian Level Congress, the affiliates of Nigerian Level Congress, just to uh, let's even be a symbolic 10 minutes rally and it is covered, and the entire world is watching to see that the reason this protest or rally is going on is because the government of Nigeria had neglected education or university uh, system for five months. I mean, it is not a good story to tell about any government. So we hope that um, government will think twice. Uh, if I were one of the advisors of government, since NLC gave this ultimatum, I will have done everything before today to make sure that that rally didn't take place. Um, but I, I believe that if um, if it's allowed to take place, because actually the die is cast, as I can imagine, and um, I think the best they can do is to just find a way beyond tomorrow to arrest the situation. So um, if, if government does not think twice about its um, neglect of the system after this, uh, after this protest, then we really will need to ask government the question, what does the government of Nigeria want with um, the university, public university system in this country? Does the government actually want to destroy it completely so that their friends who own private universities will prosper, therein hemorrhaging the rest of us to death? Because I do not imagine that any person who is um, earning what they call the minimum wage, or even those, uh, of course, there's no middle, no middle class anymore, so I do not imagine how many Nigerians who are able to send their children to private universities or to send them universities abroad. So it's clearly, it may be um, the policy of government that they want to divest completely, they want to destroy public university. And except that is the truth, there is no reason government should not react um, positively to this protest. And the, the expectation is that a government that thinks of the people 
the welfare of its citizens. A government that thinks about the development of the country must take education seriously. And they don't have to wait for a protest like this to happen before they take action. I think that is too, it's too late already in the day, um, five months down the line, and it will not be, it, it will be a sad commentary. But we allow this to fester a bit beyond the time limit that um, we we're talking about now. So I think it's up to government. And honestly speaking, um, men of goodwill should also direct this question to government. Mm. What do you want the people to do before you have a positive reaction to the um, legitimate um, uh, um, struggle that these people are having on behalf of the masses of this country? Government only can answer that question. Interesting. I also want to go come, come at you from a different direction. Now, there are those who would say that maybe it's high time that Nigerian universities become self-funded, like universities abroad. Um, I mean, I, I always ask the question, if that were to be the case, would we um, see the education system uh, better for it? Or uh, maybe we haven't even gotten to the part where we can actually uh, say that Nigerian universities can stand alone, being that now... Uh, it looks like every state has to have a university for political reasons. I actually don't know where people got this impression that autonomy in the university would mean self-financing. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Um, and I don't know where they're taking their model from. If, if they are in the Americas, you still have public universities. In the United Kingdom, you have public universities. In Germany, you have public universities. Everywhere in the Nordic countries, you have um, public universities. So government funds, um, government funds uh, education. And it is the responsibility of government to ensure that access is given to uh, this each citizen to have quality education. So um, wherever this narrative is coming, that people talk about, oh, if it's self-sustaining, I do not know what it means. To be self-sustained, means that government will have injected reasonable funds into that university by way of grants to the universities and endowments that are interest yielding. And um, given the status of our economy, the, 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 the quest to even improve on research laboratories, you do not understand, you, do, you wouldn't know where is the fund going to come for individuals to drive their, 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 their research in order to maybe have patency or to, to you know, be innovative in one way or the other that will get more into the university. We are still struggling with just the minimum benchmark mm. in our education system. So I don't know where people got that impression from. Um, universities, the popular ones you talk about in Cambridge and Oxford, the, all the other uh, private universities, they, are, they receive grants from government. And so, if we want to give a loan, we must. If we want to have a sustainable funding in education, government must have a ready need. Okay. But the second level of it is that if you do not have a conducive environment for knowledge production, you are not likely going to have people come from outside the university. In many of those places that people talk about funding and talk about independence, people go from other 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 countries to those places and pay. Nigerians are paying heavily mm. in neighboring countries and that will help to sustain. But to do that, you must make sure that you have brought your university to a point where it is attractive. How many, how many foreigners are in our universities and lecturers? How many, how many foreigners are in our universities are, are students? So these are issues that we must consider before you talk about um, um, self-sustained uh, uh, funding. But okay. Um, autonomy in the university does not actually mean self-funding. All right, let me go back to uh, Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris, um, let's talk about the labor again and the solidarity rally, which you know will happen tomorrow, like you said. Uh, it's tagged a solidarity rally. There are also those who are wondering why Labour is not protesting about the fact that, um, you know, we, we have the electricity grid that has collapsed over and over again, the cost of living which is rising high, the bakers who have said that they're going to down tools, the hike in fuel price. I mean, the list is endless. We have our plate pretty full. And just like Mr. Sado says, it's look, it looks like the middle class is fading out because, you know, times are tough. Um, will this be part of your 
rally? Will this be part of the agenda, the conversations that will be had, what you will be pushing for? Or is it just in solidarity of ASU? Yes, we know that education, uh, the future of Nigeria is hanging in the balance, is very reliant on the kind of education that we have today. But are we seeing Labour pushing for other things other than this? See, I, yes, sometimes I just smile over this kind of uh, 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 debate, you know. When, when we go on strike over a minimum wage, we are asked, is it only minimum wage you go for? What of um, uh, the cost of living? What of um, uh, cost of governance? And all of those and all of those. When we go on uh, the fact that the price of petroleum products were hiked by the federal government and the tariff on electricity. And they will ask you, why is it that you are going only on strike on this? Why can't you engage other things? You see, we have been engaging on all of these issues. But at this particular point in time, what we are concerned most about now for this solidarity rally is on the ASU issue. I was still at home. I have three of them. Two of them in final in 50 years. They are at home. They are looking at me. I have another one that is in year two. They are looking at me. So many people have all of this all over the nation. And it's causing serious harm to not only the children, but only to our nation and to our economy. And so we believe that we must have to engage this. The same way we are engaging other things, cost of governance, you have left. Well, uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, we're being cut off there. Um, but quickly, I, I want to say thank you. Um, Mr. Austin Sado is the former ASU chairman for University of Port Haka branch. And Anika Chris is the assistant general secretary of the NLC. Um, I'm wishing you good luck, gentlemen, uh, as you go on your rally tomorrow. Hopefully something great comes out of it. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking with the politician in the studio as, of course, the big guys who are all throwing their hats into the ring and, of course, fighting for the soul of Lagos, uh, battling. We want to find out, is it a three-horse race or is it a four-horse race? We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 